Grandpa's stream. I know I got a viewer there at the moment. This is Big Grandpa. This is my head. Let me just ask just a couple of things here. And thank you for joining us. We're going to do a special request today, which is going to go out there to one of my all time famous popular discord friends buddies pals from the uk and um we're going to show you how to build some really cool stuff so let me just prep something and before we do that i just want to draw attention to a couple things now obviously an object builder here good old shane the man, the myth, the legend. Also, thank you very much, Shane, for supporting me. Um, one of the patrons. Really appreciate it, brother. Uh, we're going to show him how to do sliding doors. And not only, gonna, not only am I going to show you how to do doors, I'm going to give you the files at the end of this. And they'll be all ready to go. Toy with, modify, change, however you like. And you'll have a nice little template to work from so that you're not going to mess around. And you're going to see the ins and outs, the ups and downs. And the basics of creating a door before we do that first of all i just want to <laughs> i got up this morning and i got this little thing here from bobby and the best 10 daisy mods ranked and uh this is from the gamer.com and that's a big site and i'm like oh yeah daisy dogs that should be way up there good old um hunter cz good friend of mine tails emerald haven't used it yet no sprinting zombies and then i went land rovers they're cool love them and the next one was what the okay what can i say i don't think i deserve to be on that list uh until i create them in kit form but to be number nine um was a bit of a surprise so um special shout out there to the gamer.com and uh the uh wonderful author matthew uh McKeown. Uh, who got a lot of years experience, but uh, just a bit surprising to think that something I produced was considered on the gamer.com. So nice. <laughs> what do you know? Got a few people here anyway. So once again, thank you for joining us. Today's session is going to be very, very straightforward. I'm going to keep it short, brief as I can. A lot of you guys out there want to know how to build doors. And this one obviously is going out to Shane, uh, who wants to know how to uh, build bifold doors, sliding doors. Um, I can't. I think a bifold, like where they actually fold, and then that could be done. And I actually have bifold doors right next to me. Um, so let's jump on into it. And I kind of prep some things so that I didn't have to mess around or waste your guys' time. Um, and uh shout out to all my um supporters patrons if you're watching you haven't liked subscribed whatever please do whatever you can to help out to keep this channel going i have a big format coming up guys the uh, i won't say it but it's going to be awesome you guys will love it um i know you will it'll keep you guys a little bit more engaged let's do it so i'm going to run you through the basics the first and foremost thing that you want to make sure you guys do is you check out this daisy doors on buildings on this particular uh link right up here which i will add this at the end i'll add all of this onto my um 
in my tutorial section. So if you just jump in and then you look through, you'll find this tutorials. And then I will list like I've done with the house. These files will be contained here as well for easy access. So you don't have to stress, just sit back, relax and enjoy. Let's explain a door in, in simple terms. A door, first of all, a standard door or any door must have three crucial items. A resolution LUD, which means a LUD that allows it to um, be a visual item, you know, which will be the text and stuff. Bear with me, I'm just going to change something on one of my music settings. As you guys know, I do love a bit of background music, but it's louder on my end probably than your end. So you need three things. You need a resolution LUD, and it's enlarged. You've got to click it twice to get the full size one. Thanks, BA. <laughs> yeah. So you're going to need this resolution LUD right here. Uh, which will just contain some basic components, your doors. And then you're going to need your geometry LUD and then a memory LUD. And within each one of these, there'll be some name selections that you also have to include like house, building, damage, no, and so forth and so on. So these are very, very much the basics for building any door. But in this, I'm going to show you firsthand how it's done. So let's dive right in and have a look at Object Builder, which I've already set up here so you guys can see it. I'm going to take off my Crocs because I built some foot pedals. And in case you guys don't know, I built this for to use on my streaming so I didn't have to press all of my buttons. And uh, I'll show you what it looks like because I'm going to release the plans for people to build this as well. It's very simple. Um, and what it basically is, <laughs> this is my footrest which I knocked up out of wood and you can see there is three buttons on there which um, basically are, are arcade buttons. Um, I used to build arcades. This is very cheap to construct and it's going to allow you literally while you're playing the game to drive cars, uh, fly helis and even use like the white button to walk and then hold down the red button to run and hold two buttons, so on and so forth. Stay tuned guys, I'll do that in a PDF so you guys can, can access that. So here we are. Let's see if my button works. <laughs> I pressed the right button and it worked. So let's just press F1 and bring up my little one that I put together for you guys a little bit earlier. And if you notice, I do have my protein powder. <clears throat> Grandpa's trying to get the gains back on again. Mmm. Lots of blueberries. Blueberries and protein. So here we go. Let's have a look what we got so you can see what a functioning model looks like and then we'll tear it down. So I've just thrown together this very quickly. Just a brick wall sliding doors and you can see they slide in and out now a normal door obviously is going to rotate and you might have a single door rotating or double doors rotating kind of like the sample shed that is available uh, on the uh, bohemian um, interactive website so you can you can build any kind of door but you can even build a door that rotates or spins like something out of a spaceship whatever you like but this is a sliding glass door all these files will be available for you guys, so you can use them at your heart's content. The only thing I do is if you uh, do do it and kind of give me a shout out now and then just so I know that you guys are benefiting from it. So this is our door. What is involved in creating the door? It's very, very simple. And before I do that, I'm going to click on my stream deck really, really quickly. And I'm just going to change one thing over. <laughs> So let me just change one thing over on my stream deck so I can hear you guys. If you send a message, I won't have to flick screens. This should be connecting, connected, connected. Yeah, all good. Goody, goody gumdrops. We're good. Now, give me a shout out where you're from, who you are, so I know who's watching. So here it is. What constitutes a proper door? And in the very basics I've created here, you're going to have three LODs. And normally you're going to have more. You might have a obviously a view geometry and, and stuff like that. But in this case, this is the only really for the doors. So our first is our resolution LUD, which as I showed you guys here, this is our resolution LUD, which gives us this lovely looking model. Then we're going to need a geometry LUD, which is the next LUD. And as you can see, I've only included the doors on this at the moment. If I wanted to add to the walls, I could simply just do this. I could collect them all <clears throat> and add them straight across to it. We'd have a geometry LUD. So I'll do that quickly. Copy that. And we will just paste into the there. 
and then we'll add a bit of weight to it just so it has to have weight everything must be over 150 per item so no not it's going to be more than that use your math there grandpa apply so it's got a geometry lod to it and the only thing i'll do is i'll just remove the textures because we don't need textures on a geometry lod i like that and i'll save it and there we go we've just created a geometry lod like that and we can see how the doors move in and out now the last one you're going to need when i click on it over here is a memory lod Ball which is Leon. yes Said culpable como 49 him from st louis missouri hey st louis missouri i've been through there a few times brother i love it the, the big arch there and love driving down there i think it's the mighty miss mississippi runs down through there um headed up to chicago so Thanks for joining me. So in your memory lod, you're going to need um, a few things. Now you can kind of ignore my auto open in a future episode. I will show you how you can make a door auto open on proximity. A little bit more different. We're not going to go into the complexities. We're going to stay simple. So what are you going to need? Let's just refer back always to this. You're going to need one, the door, the door action and the door axes. In simple an explanation, door, think of it as your door handle. Door action is actually the sound. So it'll be the sound of where the sound's going to come from. I have a roller door in a garage and I want the sound to come up and back a bit. So I allocate my little spot for where that sound's going to emanate from, if you follow. And finally, your door axis, and this is a normal swinging door, has two points, just like two hinges. Very, very simple, nothing complicated. You guys kind of find that. So the difference between a sliding door and a swinging door is in this point here. So if I have a look here and you see door one axes, you can see that these points from here to here define where the door is going to slide to. The last point is how far back the door is going to slide. And if I go to door, two axes, even though we're using a unified point in the middle, you can see that it highlights that one and that one, which is door two. And lastly, doors twin is defining both doors. So all this is telling it is that. Paul Leon said, I like your video, create a day's map in less than two hours. I made a map called Ozark. Oh man, Ozark, how awesome. Love the show. I've got to watch the final season, but I forgot the first one. You've got to put that on our showcase. I want to see it. Give us, put a link on the showcase. So doors twins uh, here, this doors twins one, this is just defining both doors at once. That's all it's doing. So if I go door one, there's door one, door two, doors twin one. And that's the basic fundamentals you're going to need to create your doors. Now, when you've created a door, the first 10 times you're going to encounter problems and I'm going to show you what to look for so that your doors function. So just a recap in brief, we have three major lods. We have a resolution, which is the image one you can see appearing over here. I'm sure you can see that. I think I've got it on the dual deck. Have I got it on dual deck? I think I have. Let's have a look. I'll just determine because I've only got two screens, not three, so it's kind of hard to tell. Um, let me just have a look. Yes, you probably can see it. I'll have to jump back into there and then reduce that. So as you can see, that's the resolution LOD. And then we go to our geometry LOD. That is what we're going to walk into. If, it, if a uh, player walks, he's going to strike that object. And then lastly, our memory LOD, which is going to define how the door actually functions. So as I said, I'll give you these files. All you are going to need to make this to work now is a text file. Now there is two text files, but only one to test it inside of Object Builder. So you want to get it working. What will you need? Very, very simple. This text file will be included and you can get a sample from the BI website, which is just back here. If you look, you can use this as a template. And modify it and there are some nice explanations here um, takes a moment to figure them out but i'm going to explain them to you in very simple form so what is a model config a model config 
actually tells Object Builder and everything else how the how the actual model functions. So if it's got doors, how they work, so on and so forth. So to break this down in simple terms, all we've done here, and I'm not going to go into, into C Sharp or anything else, the coding, I'm going to keep it simple. Just follow this template and just give your class a name. If it's two doors, just use skeleton two doors. Um, you can name this whatever you like, but you've got to make sure you keep using it further on down. So the next pay phase in our skeleton, and our skeleton is the structure of how it works, we've defined two doors. Door one and door two, as you can see, and both of these absolutely must match the name of your doors here. Now I've done a bit of a naughty here because you can see I've put capitals and generally I don't do that. I keep them all lowercase just in case, but it does still work, but it's a good coding practice to, uh, to change them to all the same. So um, I'm going to try to change that just to be safe because sometimes you can run into problems. So try to keep your coding always uniformed and the same. So we can see we've defined door one and door two in the model. You might have one door only, so you don't need to. And then as we move down here, this is the most important part where most people mess up. This little bit of code here is just telling it, look at all this information and now start using it. The class sliding door sample this is where most things don't work. And as I've noted, be sure this is your model name minus the P3D extension. So go in and look at the folder where you've, in my case, it will be, once you get this to use, it'll be toot, toot sliding doors, and you'll find it in there. Now I've put two doors in there, normal doors and sliding doors. That has Jorge to be Romero. exactly the same. Said I didn't know that you can have bulldozer open at real time. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Sure can. So there's our sliding door. So all I recommend is copying that. This is to ensure you don't have these problems and literally just pasting it right into here. Okay. Most important. Because if you do not name that correctly, your doors just won't function and you'll be wondering why. On the next section, all we've done is we've created a skeleton and we've just called it two door, which if we look up here, it's calling this as well. Okay. So it's all the same. And here's the fun part. Sliding doors, very straightforward, but you have to be very strict. Now in a normal door, if we look at a normal door, you'll notice that we use type equals rotation. In other words, it's a rotational movement. We're going to use a translation. It's going to translate the two points. If you make sense, you're going to, instead of rotating on those two axes, it's going to translate the movement across. So we just put in translation. And now all we're doing here is we've called the each door. I've given it an independent name. So slide door 1A, slide door 1B. You can name them however you like, but this is the class that I've given them but I do it so I remember it. <clears throat> and now, <coughs> excuse me, still getting over the Charlie Victor, but it's coming out of me really slowly, but I'm getting it. So, source. Now, this is a confusing part for some people starting out coding. When you're talking about a source, it's saying, we're going to move... <coughs> excuse me. We're going to move this or rotate this on a translation. My goodness, I'm losing my voice. Can you believe that? That happened quick. That's never happened. All right, so <clears throat> the source is going to be what we're addressing. And I really am losing my voice very fast, so I'll move through this quick. The source <clears throat> is what it's going to move. So it's literally going to look, in this case, <coughs> as door one. But in my case, we want to move both doors. So how do we do that? I've never had this happen before. Sorry. So in my case, 
we can see that I've named in my points doors twin and doors twin really is door one door two I'll talk softer Matt will stop me from coughing doors twin is just both points which are defined and it's saying move it both doors now the memory is telling whether it's open or closed in daisy all doors are generally closed unless daisy chooses to randomly open them then it's selecting the item which in this case door one and then it's saying the axes door one axes so when we look at door one axes we can see it's taking it from here to here and it's sliding it to the left okay and the minimum value is zero maximum value is one that's uh that's just saying basically closed or open there's more we can do with that but we won't go into it now here's where it's slightly different with a sliding door with a sliding door as compared to a rotating door rotating you're going to use angle and for example this will be zero to the radius of 1.4 but because we're doing on a translation a slide instead we're using offset so we're offsetting from zero which is the closed point so if we go back and look at our model so zero is our closed point <clears throat> and if i go over to my model and i actually show you and you look up the top you'll notice that that little black thing up the top that appears is showing you how much it's opened see so that's one and that's zero so all it's doing in that particular process it's telling it offset zero and the maximum can be one or minus one now the reason we put minus one here is because <coughs> sorry one door <coughs> might have got a bit of food in my throat or something one door is running one way one's running another so there's a negative and a positive if you're not sure just simply change them to whatever you think they should be I'll put one in there and then refresh it in your bulldozer like this and then see what happens now let's try it because I've changed them and we can see oh they're crossing each other so I know that's not right so all I have to do and this is the fun part if you do a lot of doors you get really quick at this so we know that that one there must be a positive let's see how that affects that let's go back and i'm giving you a sample so you can work out some of the techniques i use to troubleshoot doors i once did a place that had 64 doors some of them automated with push buttons so i've changed one of them and you can see how it's now sliding both doors to the right which I don't know if that's got a purpose for anyone but obviously in our case it's no use so we've got to change one of the other doors <clears throat> and we have to change this one to a negative negative. and by doing that and ref refreshing <clears throat> we should find our doors start to function there we go and that is how the translation works so once you've done that and you're happy you can simply use the keys on your keyboards test and that is the two bracket keys um, which are right next to the p so if you've got multiple doors you can press either of those to rotate through the different doors right below it is your um, semicolon and your um, comma i think it is yeah holding those down will run it through the animation so you can witness how it works just like that now you may say that's great now i'm going to put it in my game it's going to work and no it won't the reason being is although it works in daisy inside of object builder and you're happy with it you've still now got to make sure a couple things are done here's really important and please don't miss this if you once you've created a geometry lod make sure that you go to structure topology find components this is really important because if the components aren't found they're not defined things won't work and that'll catch a lot of people out okay so make sure that you check that save that 
And now we can move on to the final stage of creating a, a functioning door. And that is the other file, because as we stated, there is two files required, model config, and lastly, your game config. <clears throat> now, as you can note here, it says the game config class name has to be land underscore model name. Okay. So you have to make this, like I said earlier, the name of your model. And in order to be linked directly correctly with the model, please keep in mind that the class equals house name property and configs class requires your terrain to be right at rebinarized. So when you binarize your models and everything else, or your, your terrain, they will fix themselves. So that's kind of important. So let's go. Said VM doc today. G'day, mate. I kind of missed that on the digital voice, but I'll check what it says over there. <laughs> okay, one of those ones. <laughs> and bomb, bomb today. Yep, okay. Thank you for spamming me. Not. All right. <laughs> so the only thing we've got to make sure we've done on this, as I, as I said to you guys earlier, we have to ensure that, above all things, that this, in this section here, make sure that you add these if it's a building obviously it is it's a door you have to have these ones inclusive so be sure and include those into here new and we're just going to call this one class house there's a reason why we do this and this is important for your display maps and everything else map and we just put building because it's a building and lastly, damage, no. <clears throat> Can add two M's or one M, it doesn't really mind. And in Daisy, uh, buildings don't damage. <clears throat> and what that's going to do is whenever you put your model in, obviously, <clears throat> uh, and you look at the view, uh, it's going to show what that is, either in Terrain Builder or in the actual in-game map as well, and it just defines it. I hope that makes sense. If you're not sure, feel free to ask me questions, guys. That's what I am here for. <clears throat> Let's save that. My voice is getting better now. So I got a bit of blueberry. I think I got a bit of blueberry stuck in the back of that throat. Uh, let's go over and do our config. <clears throat> Which, as I said, isn't complicated. But you could also stick to the same thing that I mentioned before. <clears throat> so looking at our config, your custom building will be the same as this right here. Make sure that is defined. So we go in there and we simply change. There's your land model model. So your class, your custom building, we'll give it a name and make sure we call our land model exactly what the model name is. So it'll be land underscore sliding door sample. <clears throat> Thank you, reminder. I will take a stretch later. <clears throat> now, <clears throat> The areas above it, these are for you to fill out, and these are important once you pack and put them on Steam. So let's put this as Big Grandpa Grandpa. <laughs> feel like I got a bug in my throat. So I will just pop that in there. Name, and we'll just call it Sliding Door Demo. And the website, www.djs.com, which will be coming online soon, the new one, which will have all of our asset store. Tons of tutorials and all that. So all we've done, <coughs> lighting door sample. We've included the model that it's looking for, house no destruct. And the next thing we need to tell it is the path. Here's a quick handy tip. How to get your path exact. Simply hold down your shift key, right click, and choose copy as path. Now what that's going to do is make it very simple to cut and paste paths straight in like that and all we have to do is just remove all the preceding stuff <clears throat> save i think i do do I, do I normally remove the first one i think i do don't i no i always leave the the first one on there that's right sometimes i get confused it's not creeping decrepitude it's just so much work um <clears throat> so as you can see i've now defined uh the model location and you will, once I give you this file, you guys are going to need to 
unpack it onto the root of your P drive. So make sure that when you unpack it, it'll be folded toot and inside of toot will be toot sliding doors and that all my tutorials will be in that format. So they'll all be in one folder and they'll be organized when you need to grab them. Simple to find. Shout out to my wonderful friend Dino Binos. You are a man, a myth, a legend. Because uh, I kind of got that idea from you and I thought, <clears throat> if someone as good as Dino can do it, then I'm going to follow his lead. Thanks, Dino. So in the next section here, we have to make sure that we're just defining. Now, these display names will not be really used. So you, don't, you can call them what you like, reference, whatever it is. Um, obviously, now here's where the important part comes to it. Make sure that your component names are named the same. And as I said before, keep your um, capitalization everything to the same. So this is just door one. You notice we said earlier door one action. That's the sound position. So let's have a quick look at our model. Go into our memory. And now we can see in, in here. Where is it? Memory. Ah. Didn't I include one? So we didn't include one. So we've got to include one. So there you go. I never even realized I didn't include it. So that's kind of good. See, I've worked through and I've found one of my things that I'm missing. So door one action is the sound of where the sound is going to come from. Now, this is a sliding door. So I'm going to make the sliding door sound come because I think they kind of come from above when I'm near them, but it's kind of up to you. You can move that sound around. So I'm just going to click and press the INS insert key, which is going to create a point. And all I'm going to do is I'm just going to zoom in. And I'm just going to line it up a little bit just to be clean. And down here, we're now going to create a, a new uh, one, which is going to be called door one action like that. So we would go uh, new, paste it in there. And let's see if it defined it. So door one action is now defined. And on the same side of it, there's going to be a door to action. So each door that's going to open. Now, here's a cool thing. As you're doing this, you come up with ideas and go, you know what? I want the door sound to be over here because I think the motors for the doors are going to be in here. So I'm going to put that door sound there. And all I'm going to do is copy, paste, move another one over there. And that's going to be door to door to action. And I'll just copy that. And all I'm going to do is create a new one and I'm going to call it door. Whoops, paste it in. I've already got it in my clipboard. Door to action. And I'm just redefining it. Now, if you haven't done this before, right clicking and redefine is telling it whatever is highlighted is going to redefine that as that point. But there's a catch to it. If you go door one action, you'll notice it's listed both. So all I'm going to do is right click, wait, and I'm going to set this to zero, which is going to remove what they call a wait. So now, <laughs> it's making a layer out of me, isn't it? Door one action. So I'll redefine door one action by simply highlighting that one and redefining it. Now we should have door one action, door two, door two action isn't defined, so I'm going to go and redefine that one. So I'll just go here and go door to action, redefine. And let's have a look. Door one action, door two action. And that's it. We've now crucially defined where the sound positions are going to come from. <clears throat> now, moving down to the next section is pretty straightforward. The animation period. You can mess with this as much as you like. So if you want to make um, an animation period that's longer or shorter, you can increase this number and it can be via decimal points as well. So 1.8, whatever you like, 2.3. In one of my samples, which is my um, bank vault, and I'll show that to you guys quickly so you can see what a very complicated one looks like. And you'll get a rough idea of what can be achieved um, so this is my bank, my actual uh, bank with all the vault doors and so on and so forth. Now, if you look at my vault door, there's a 25 second uh, animation period. Why is that? I'll show you why. 
<laughs> and I don't want you to get complicated, but my door has multiple parts. It has parts that spin, parts, pins that pull in, parts that rotate, things that turn this way, and then the door opens. So I want to take 25 seconds to open. So each one of these that I've used are telling it the spinner handle, the horizontal rods, the small rods, the locking shafts. And, you know, I'm not trying to impress you. I'm just trying to impress upon you that whenever you change this number, we'll determine the animation period. And you can make it as long as you want, if you want to door slow or fast. Initial phase is always zero, set to zero, and the initial open is 0 0.5. Toy with those, you'll know what they make sense. Now, sound open, sound close, sound locked, sound open a bit. You can make a door make any sound you want, and it's very, very straightforward, because whenever you take a door, and let's have another look at, uh, for example, mine. You can see I've told it to use door, metal, small, open. Okay, so that is the sounds that my door is going to make. <clears throat> On custom models, I define right at the bottom here. For example, I have custom sounds as well. So you can add your own individual custom sounds for when the doors open. Uh, and that's another section without getting complicated. I won't go into that today because I don't think we want to flood you with information. Lest I say, if you add any of these, these are all connected with the DZ folder. And if you go in the DZ folder and you have a look through, you'll find there is different sounds in here, both like these are ambient sounds. Um, but there is also other sounds like doors opening and et cetera, et cetera. So you can connect it with any of these if you wish. Um, or you can create your own custom sound like I did, which has to be an OGG file for it to function. Uh, but otherwise, you can just add the regular ones or just have a look at um, some of the other samples and see what you got. So that's added that. And now what we've got is our uh, doors defined, the component that it's going to move, the sound position. So this is the door handle. That's what it's looking for. That's the area that when you look, it's going to open or create the do you want to open and then the door action and this last section here is a damage system if you asked me exactly how it functions i wouldn't be able to tell you exactly because i've never really toyed with it uh, but lest i say that for each one of these you want to copy and paste one of these so if you've got um, door one and you then need to also create another one as well so you need to copy and paste and call that door two and that will create your file so what is the benefit of having a, a model config and a config cpp well the model config is going to tell it how to do that and the config cpp is exactly what packing it and binarizing it is going to require in order to make it function inside your model and that will get you all started um so let's have a look and see if we have any luck now i need to make a real emphasis on this guys if like me even with all the years of modeling you still have problems packing don't stress i'll have more info on that and ways of simplifying that process just get my mouse over here i've got to double click to get my screens up always please guys don't use that on Builder. Please use PBO Project when you're doing any of this, okay? Because whenever you're building, add-on Builder will trick you and say, yeah, it's fine, it's packed, good. And then you put it in the game, it don't work. Reason being is it's not telling you much else in the way of information. So that's why we use um, PBO Project via Makiros. You'll find a link to all of that in my download section on my Discord. In simple senses, we're gonna tell it where we want the uh, output folder to go. So I'm just going to tell it, it always must be in your program files, Steam, Steam Apps Common, Daisy, and that is going to be the folder where all of your custom mods are going to be. So let's have a look and see what we can put in here. And I can see I've got a toot folder. I'm going to add that into that with the other ones that I've created. And we're going to choose the source folder. In other words, what we just created. So we're going to go down into toots. Toot, toot, toot. Look for our sliding door 
And I hope this doesn't work the first time because I want to show you guys how I potentially fix it or mess with it. So we're going to hear crunch and either we're going to hear hallelujah or violins. So let's see. Grandpa got mad skills. Got to pat myself on the back because I hadn't bothered to pack that before or anything. So there you go. That's what will happen. Now, having got your hallelujahs, you might want to look at your output log and see exactly what else is potentially um, a fault. Now, mine is probably opening in my text document. Yep. My packing log here will tell me any issues that I may be having. Don't stress about it too much. And... Um, Looks pretty good. And let's just have a look at the, actually there's another file, which is the bin log. Now you will get some of these issues here, which are a combination of both um, Makiro's being designed primarily for armor, and now we're using it for Daisy, and they won't affect it as much, but worth looking at. A uh, house no destruct is clear, but definition was not found. That's okay because house no destruct is a Daisy based thing. And the warning, the terrain grid 12.5 will be too slow, should use 30. Yeah, um, I wouldn't worry about that too much. These are all just normal things. Convert model, convert, vert, vert. Yep, yep. Looks pretty good. And that is a packed model ready to test. So how would you test a model um, once you've packed it? Well, simple way to do it, which I believe is simple. Let's close that over there. The simplest way to do it is to set yourself up a local server and Speed Gamer, I think, did an awesome tutorial that I followed. I haven't done one because I loved his, but I will do one for the DZ Academy in case people want that as well. It's good to have a mixture of them. So I'm just going to run my local server and we're going to hope and pray that it works. And if it doesn't, we're going to enjoy the process because that's how I do here. I'm going to close down my Daisy SA because I don't want it open. I don't want to open Daisy. And I don't want to jump into my mods. And I'm going to unselect all those mods, load my Rosebud mod, which is down here. And I'm going to add that mod that I just created. And we're going to hope that it works. Select and load that mod in there. So I've got another mod. And we're going to give it an attempt to see if my sliding doors work in game. We're going to drop them in using Zombri. So hopefully they will appear at the right heights, which they should. And then we're going to walk up and see if they work. And if not, we'll have a quick look and see where we can debug it. The real advantage of having a local server, the debugging process for mods, is going to be the same as real time on a real server without uploading them, without going in offline mode or without using all the rest. Let me just adjust, adjust my XLR lead. I can hear it crack. I am going to take this microphone back. It wasn't cheap, but um, it is what it is. Oh, yep. I'm just going to do this now. So what it's saying is a whole lot of mods missing, but they're not missing. <clears throat> so <laughs> you're not doing that to me today. So sorry. So what we'll do is I'll just go back and make sure I've got... Oh, I know why I did that. You know why I did that? I was thinking on all my complexities. I didn't even choose local LAN. And that is why that happened. If I had chose my local LAN, it would have brought up that. And now I can join. And it's missing my Rosebud one now, so I've got to go back and re-add that. So I'll just unload this garbage. And we'll just load up that tube again. I always have to click load every time my wife doesn't have to do it. Grandma, for some reason, hers does it fine. But then we'll just add Rosebud in there. Select, load, play. And we'll see. Should load up now. And then we can drop this model in that we've just created. And I literally just threw that together to, as a template for you guys to utilize, along with this video as a reference. Because sometimes the explanations and people don't understand how to do doors. And they are simple once you've done a few. As I said, sliding doors, few extra alterations, but this is the process, guys. Once again, thanks, guys, for supporting me, subscribing. If you haven't liked, subscribed, shared, or 
followed me on Twitch, do all that kind of good stuff. I've got so much good content coming out and I've got a whole new format coming up, which I'm excited about, which I know you guys are going to love um, when it comes out. <laughs> it's playing funny buggers to me today, isn't it? We'll just close that server down and redo it again. But I get so much cool stuff coming up that I can't wait to share some of the information uh, with you guys of what I've got on the uh, on the horizon, so to speak. Let's just go mods. Sorry for the delay, guys, but you know how it is. Anything can go wrong always goes wrong. Normally this is a lot simpler, but I have messed with a few things and occasionally you tweak things. And we'll see if it works this time. See if it joins, it should join, it says got all the mods there, so it hopefully should join now. Otherwise it's missing in my tooth folder. Hope you guys are having a good day. Hope everyone's staying healthy and safe and all that good stuff. If there's any suggestions, ideas, tutorials you guys want me to bring to you, um, that's what I do. I uh, lost all my business two years ago and uh, because of COVID, so I kind of like had to do something with our lives. And this has become my focus and my passion and my map, which I'm looking forward to releasing. So anyway, I can help Spanish you guys. Bird. Yes. Said, is it possible? I mean easy to make street lights that works at night with flickering and all okay answer to that question yes you can make street lights is it easy no uh is it available yes uh there is many uh, um there is a few mods out there that already do that um so they can it can actually be done bit with me i've as i told you guys i created foot pedals Daisy foot pedals connected. Listen <laughs> to that phlegmy voice. I <laughs> gotta get over this stuff. So I'm using foot pedals to drive <clears throat> to run now. Um, see, no hands. <laughs> so ignore that road on the side, guys. It's too steep a hill. I'm gonna delete that road because it, you cannot have two roads that close. So we're just gonna jump up here. And I will show you guys when you're doing mapping. See all that, if you don't want that Minecrafty look to it. Five minute pro or two minute process, you can remove all that very, very quickly as well. And this is an area that I'm just starting to work on again because it's an area that I need to finish. So let's have a look at Zombri and let's look at the spawn menu, turn off safe, see if we can get sliding doors. Let's see. Two. It's not showing up, but let me just have a look what I called it because I got to get it by the same name, but I know I called it the right thing. Ah, where are you, big boy? I called it sliding doors. I definitely called it land sliding doors. So I'll just look under land and see what we get. L A N D underscore. S uh, sliding doors. Yeah didn't come up in there for some reason but I did load the mod in I know I loaded it in let me just check make sure because Daisy always plays games <clears throat> and it pretends that it's loaded stuff you see it didn't you see even though I added it it didn't do it and that always gets me because even though I load local mod here it makes me go down and then click down here I don't know why that is it's kind of an anomaly with with my system oh actually <clears throat> I do remember what that was, the reason that didn't load in there. The reason being is if I add local mod. Um, <laughs> see, it's not, it doesn't want to load it up. So select. It's not actually loading it into there. That's why, <clears throat> that's why I couldn't see it. So you're always going to deal with these things. Now, if it rejects it, it'll be very simply why, and I'll show you why. <clears throat> so let's go back to servers, LAN, and we'll rejoin, and I should have access to those doors. <clears throat> so the reason it's not appearing in here is because I just have to add a simple line to my local server. And I will do a tutorial on this, guys. So <clears throat> if you guys 
want to know how to do all of this, how to create your own server, I will show you exactly how to do it. Bear with me, I'm just fixing a couple things here. And then we'll test that door out and see how it works. So, all I need to do is get my uh, Rosebud text file, edit that. Mm -hmm. Open my text file. And the only thing it's going to need in there is that mod that I created, which I didn't include it. See how I have oversights and stuff like that. So I'm just going to add um, the at. So I've got to add a semicolon and then an add and then toot like that that should then tell it my local server make sure you add that when we load up and that should fix the problem a lot to think of but it does come to you after a while part of the fun guys part of the fun if you don't learn to enjoy the struggles you'll never enjoy day z so that's it let's have a look more details toots in there yep Hopefully this will work and then I can show you guys. <clears throat> kind of did this off the cuff just because a few hours ago it was uh, <clears throat> UK Shane. Uh, Shane UK has said, how do you do sliding doors? I thought, hey, what a great idea for a knock-up tutorial. So what you're seeing I'm doing here is on the fly. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. <laughs> Legend. Thanks, mate. So nice. I'm doing my best to give you the best I can, guys. So um, any way that uh, I can help you guys out, that's my goal. To be sure that everybody is getting what they want. And like I said, guys, you are going to encounter things like this where you come across errors. So all it's saying here is... <clears throat> um, da -da 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 uh, add two doors, add two sliding doors, PPO. Make sure it's installed correctly on the server. So the reason that is, and once again, here's fun of if debugging. When you have a local server, it's the same as an online server, meaning that every file that you create in a, in a PBO must also be uploaded to your server. And as you can see, there is one in here that I've added, which I didn't up, add to my local server. So I'm just going to copy it. And I'm just going to paste it in here because this is where the shoot folder goes. This is my little local thing. And now it's in there. And now it should work. I think on luck. I hope so. So if you struggle with DayZ, I've got too many consoles running. Let me turn that off. Let me turn all that off. Make sure we simplify things. Keep it simple, stupid. Always the logo. Try to do my best to keep it simple doesn't have to be that complicated if you streamline things down all right let's try it again now shall we so we'll just unload those mods and as you notice with my stupid system here I have to also click load mod even though I've told it to add the local mod got me but anyway never used to do that now it does it until I do the next format of my hard drive so LAN join set up and then hopefully it'll work and you guys will get the picture of what I was talking about when I was mentioning being able to get things working. Now you could just put this into um, <clears throat> Daisy offline mode and test your doors. But I love to test things in the local server because I know it's going to reflect what's really happening on a proper game server. <clears throat> Because you don't always get what you get with offline mode that you do with um, local server, online server. Uh, I think grandma's, little grandma's playing right now as I speak. Yep, she's out there running around Novo. You up at Novo, grandma? You up at Novo? Yep, she's up at Novo. I've got the thump. Uh, back at her place, she ran from Churneris up to Novo to her place. So, All right, let's give it another try, see if it works. And I'm sure hoping it will this time. You guys will get the idea if it doesn't, don't stress. You can toy with it anyway. So sliding door. There it is. And there's our sliding door. Now, the reason it appears under the ground like that is simply based on <laughs> one simple fact is that uh, uh, we haven't set its uh, land height or anything else. 
So you will get that. And and obviously there's an issue with the, the open close. So that's where we're going to go back and just have a look at how we've done that. Because that will happen as well. So if you've set it to the wrong uh, mode, it will do that. But I will toy with that. But as you guys can see, that was only meant to be a quick tutorial. And from that, any of the information that you guys can derive, um, I will add this. I will fix that up for you rather than waste your time watching me do this. I will fix up that little issue with the script and I'll make a note of it so you guys can see. And dropping them in game like this isn't the best way to do it, as I said, because um, let's face it, um, you, you want to be able to put them into Rain Builder. <laughs> or you could use Daisy Editor and then adjust the heights. It's kind of up to you. But you guys got, get the idea. We knocked up a door. You can see the transparencies on the door. So if I crouch down like this, um, there will be included in this as well. Um, the RV mats and the glass doors. So if you want to use them, feel free to use them, guys. They'll be there for that purpose. And that will help you guys out making doors. So what I will do right now, I will simply take what I've done here and I'll pack it. And actually, I will check it and pack it. That way you guys will have a fully functioning one. Because as I said, as you noticed, running it inside of uh, Object Builder, we did notice that it worked perfectly fine, but when we brought it over into, into our actual DayZ, we noticed the door wasn't functioning. And that is the exact reason why I don't ever believe just because a door works in Object Builder as such, that's going to reflect correct function inside of DayZ. <laughs> so make sure that you always set up a local server and I will give you a link to Speedscaler because I think he deserves the credit to it. Um, I will get you the YouTube Speedscaler local server. <clears throat> so, um, so Daisy a local server, and I think it's called Speed. I think it's called Speedscaler, something like that. We'll find him. How to install local server? Yep, this will be the one right here. An update. Go to the updated version six months ago. I'll give you guys a link to this as well, because this is a great tutorial and what a great man as well. Let's ignore the uh, politicians. It's Hollywood for ugly people. <clears throat> but he's fabulous. Uh, Namalsk or great Deer voice. Isle. There may well be some mission files. That there may be a bit of some mission files. I love his voice. He's great. So I'll give you a link to that as well in the tutorials. So um, I'll add that right now um so i'll just add that into there so you guys have a link to that because i know that'll be handy for you guys so set that up and what i will do is i'll take a break i'll fix that little issue that we had obviously with the door and i'll let you know what i found and as well as that uh anything questions you have um please let me know i can see you guys are helping each other out tremendously uh i still have any one option uh option that's no, unusual he's getting a issue with his um terrain processor i'm not sure why but if you overwrite it uh it should delete those files unusual some new members um shout out there to um tengri who who did a server boost as well guys oh you are awesome i love you guys so cool and um <clears throat> once again um special shock to realize that the gamer <laughs> I don't know why. Creating me is number nine on the best mods for DayZ. I don't think, I'm not being humble, but I think that's not true. I think there's way better mods than my treehouse, but I really will accept the thing. So thank you uh, guys for whoever chose to put together this top 10 list and put me at number nine. I will push it to kits so that we have an entire buildable system coming up where you can build the tree houses as well. Um, and once again, um, if you haven't um, check out some of the other videos obviously if you're starting out you haven't built a map be sure and check out my youtube channel because in there you will find that i have uh, a ton of videos that i've created so you can sift through them to your heart's content but if you go back to my earlier ones you will find hidden amongst all that the all popular um create a daisy map in less than two hours i will do an update on that a newer version streamlined and 
cleaner, but that will tell you how to begin with doing your maps. And there's a bunch of other stuff that I've got on here as well um, that you guys might be interested in. Check it through it. And I will be adding more stuff as we get the the Daisy Academy on board. Uh, excited about the new updates with uh, Daisy coming up. <clears throat> That's going to be fabulous. Hopefully we'll get some really cool stuff because if you guys have not seen it so far, and I'll give it finish this this stream off briefly with a little follow up on what we know about Bohemia and what's coming up. Uh, Bohemian Interactive at the moment are a letting us sneak previews into what's coming up regarding the new Infusion engine. If you haven't seen it, there is a great video on their website. Uh, and it's going to be a lot greater than we expected. So the Infusion engine is cross-platform compatible. So you can run it on PC, Xbox, PlayStation, and um, full DirectX support, everything else. And it's using C++ and scripting language and object orientated, all this kind of cool stuff. And um, Shader written in HLSL are using for render. So it's going to be really cool new engine update like this, this kind of cool stuff. And it allows us to work together with a bunch of new tools. Instead of Terrain Builder, we're going to have World Creator. Uh, world Editor. Oh, I've got to be careful. I want to copyright with World Creator. World Editor, Particle Editors, Animation Editor, Script Editor, and Audio Editor, Behavior Editor, Procedural Animation Editor, String Editor, and a Layout Editor for creating user game interfaces. This is not just a moddable for DayZ. It's going to be, from what I can see, a separate thing to Unreal Engine, which will allow you guys to go ahead and, once they release it, allow us to create our own standalone games. Potentially, they're being tight-lipped on it, but I'm pretty sure we're going to see that's the avenue they're going to follow because that's something that Bohemia has up their sleeve and they're not letting us know too much. But you do get an idea of some of the, uh, the gorgeous uh, atmosphere the new engine's producing. They've increased water, the vision, the everything. Uh, how we do stuff like um, vehicles. It's going to be a whole new kettle of fish. So this will be exciting. Um, and it's, for me, a whole new start. So this is the engine, uh, the real virtuality engine. And then there's the Enforce engine. Um, which is going to be really, really cool. So they're using it for a bunch of their games. And obviously the new updates are going to add flexible, scalable, multi-platforms. Looks good, runs better. All the tools for all creators. Materials, textures, animation, sounds, UI, localization, and Fusion's tools cover the full creative spectrum of modding and game development. Notice that, and game development. Everything in Infusion is made for today's online game worlds. The tool set includes access to back-end online services. Did you understand what they just said there? The tool set includes access to back-end online services. See? See? The devil in the detail. They can have online services. And it's built around a rich client-server architecture. So this is going to be great. Just a quick glance. For players, believable worlds... As you can see from their images and such, it's going to create a much more believable environment, which is more matching to Unreal. Uh, textures, everything is just a lot better. For creators, whether you're looking to create a brand new game, say, or a cool new terrain, or simply change how a few assets behave, we want to have you to have all the tools right at your fingertips. And the Infusion Workbench, uh, which we've already got, but it's going to be changed. We're going to get information on how to use the animation editor, uh, workbench editor for texturing vehicles. You can see here in this image, they're texturing vehicles. Uh, particle editor. Once again, you want to do lights, then doing lights, lighting, whatever it is, this is going to be all the engine we're going to use. See, they can adjust the colors, um, alphas, the rotation speed, the size of the flames. And this is really cool. This basically is Blender. That's all it is, it's just Blender. But they've got a special, obviously, a plugin for Blender, which is going to allow us, um, obviously, to use the FBX models and bring everything in, all your lighting and so forth. Now, support for legacy content, important for you guys if you're building a map games mods right now. This is 
what's going to help you because they'll be releasing the tool will help you adapt your existing p3ds to infusions standard so that's good you're not going to lose what you built your workbench plugins infusion workbench supports custom extensions which i know a lot of guys will start building tons of those extensions and obviously uh object oriented scripting language um which we'll go into a bit of that in another time and i'll explain it let your creativity flow infusion lets you focus on creation that's where we are that's because everything you need to build a game worlds and terrains is available in a single streamlined tool set that's how they're going separating all the tools putting them in one one place by using vector data and pre-built generators you can automate a lot of the tedious work and speed up the world building process significantly so everything i taught you once they come out with this i'm gonna to have to redo everything because they're going to change the way we model but we can still use our old models and of course here you can see this is just add-on builder rebranded um, to complete infusions development tool set we're building a proprietary modding back end that will help players discover and download your mods creations stop listen this is really important guys if you're watching this and you are a modder or a game designer or dream of building a game they're also building a proprietary modding backend that will help players discover and download your mods and creations so they're going to build something separate to steam something separate and that's why i say they're going down they're going to go down the same avenue as unreal and they're crazy not to so there it is you've seen the words right there we're planning on embedding our own workshop solution directly into our future games across pc games consoles to make it fully multi-platform but also platform independent that is exciting and there's some questions and answers here modding you guys love um how moddable games in infusion there are very few limits um and will you provide in documentation yes yes we will do our best to provide documentation for workflows when we release infusion as well as various samples and tutorials i believe they will it's in their interest the engine they're going down the way they're going to go will there be an option to monetize mods for infusion games we're not considering this option at the moment beyond our current cdlc model cdlc model but we're making decisions in the future on a case-by-case -case basis so if you produce a whopping awesome map and you approach them you have an opportunity that if they like it they let you they may let you monetize it which means they probably take a commission but guys you could be building the next daisy or whatever it is uh will we be able able to use infusion to make completely new games and what are license costs now watch this carefully they got a very funny way of putting things technically speaking developing a full standalone game will be possible using infusion tools but we are currently do not plan to license the engine for standalone third-party projects which you got to read it they're kind of yes no technically speaking you can develop in other words you can build a full standalone game but we currently do not plan to license the engine for standalone third party projects so that'll be the disappointing moment for you but i think this monetizing thing will override a lot of this for people and lastly fusion engine is programmed c plus plus and uses hsls shaders for rendering the core of the engine is extended by high level scripting language called enforce which is a object oriented programming scripting language with very familiar syntax and that guys for you will probably change a lot of things um and for developers we're building um that engine will power the next decade of bohemian's flagship so yeah they, they look like they're doing exciting stuff and i think we are going to go into a uh, a new way of modding once they come out with it so you should be as excited as i am uh, and we just have to hang out and wait till they release the thing so don't ask me when <laughs> question is how long is a piece of string but i think it may be a little bit sooner than we expect and that's my greatest hopes guys um so yeah if you've enjoyed this um little uh, stream that i did uh shout out to shane uk you man myth legend i really appreciate um shane and all you guys all your questions anything that i can help you with is what I'm here for um, that's my job literally that's what I do now because I have nothing else to do since 
Dudley Victor took away all my business and everything else. So here I am. And a shout out to Easy Mike M, Matthew A, Nigel Thomas, James Wilson, Alex Trust, Rodolph Lazarus, Obtuse Rubber Goose, Butch McIntosh, Boyd73 over there at the Daisy uh, podcast. Also, uh, Flynn, thank you, Flynn, um, who's a mod. Matthew Meany, Isidore Nix, Red Dragon, and the man, the myth, the legend, Shane UK, who this tutorial was brought to you guys to be able to enjoy and watch. Now, before we finish the uh, podcast off for today, if anyone has any questions, suggestions, ideas, anything they want to see on an upcoming podcast, if they want to do a collaboration uh, workshop where you're having issues and you want Grandpa to jump on and guide you, I'm going to include you in a segment which we will be calling um, on our segment, um, Help Me Grandpa. And it'll be a segment where you come on, show me your issues, and I will do my best to solve your problems. I will look like a duck. Top will look calm, but the feet will be kicking a million miles an hour. But I will do my best to make sure you guys have something. And all I ask in return, like, subscribe, share, do whatever you can do. And um, any questions, feel free to punch them out now because I'm getting towards this and I need to take a break, grab some lunch, come back and do a bit of uh, modding on Rosebud and some setting up of the new DZ Academy with our our uh, store and everything on it that you can download all your mods. And I will fix that that mod that I did today, the demo on this, and I will upload it for you guys to have a toy with. Or I might upload it the way it is so that you guys have to figure out why it doesn't work. <laughs> Whatever it is. So once again, guys, thank you for joining me here. Uh, I guess there's no questions. No one sort of asked anything in particular. I think I will take a break, a lunch, come back later on, and you may see me do a bit of modding on Rosebud as well. So uh, shout out to all you guys. Thank you very much. I will see you all guys um, very, very soon. Um, adios, uh, Octopus. I hope uh, we'll figure out your issue with that overriding terrain processor. You may need to delete the ones in the folder and then copy the ones that I gave you straight in. And that should give them to you. Otherwise, we'll have a look at it. Maybe we could do that on the Help Grandpa uh, session as well. You are so welcome, Red TLC. Any way uh, I can help you, please let me know. And um, good to see that you followed along till now. I'll give you another 10 seconds, guys. Anyone, any questions, any uh, theories, ideas, any critique? Yes, I know. I'm not the greatest looking dude in the world and I'm not going to get a inflatable indoor pool and start licking my microphone. What the hell was that all about? You know, you get this stupid stuff when you go into Twitch and it shows some girl and like, I don't watch that stuff. I'm being honest. Now you guys think, you know, you should do No, I don't. Clicked on it and she's literally licking a mic and she's got 7,000 views. I'm like, ah, you mean I got to lick a mic to get 7,000 people watch? I don't think it's going to work. But anyway, <laughs> you are always welcome um, at AO's Octopus as well. So um, what else can I tell you? One more thing before we go, I will be updating the tree mod. I know a lot of you guys have seen the tree mod and some of you guys are using it. I know there's quite a few people. Let's have a quick check um, what's going on. Grandson made me type this garbage in here and it doesn't work anyway. I heard a noise. Oh, yeah. I don't know what that noise was. It's got me. I heard a funny noise. Ding, ding, ding. Didn't, didn't give me a warning what it was. But anyway, I'll show you just quickly. Um, and I'll tell you what I'm planning on this because a lot of you guys are going to love this. The, uh, the tree mod, look, I really appreciate it. It got awarded a lot of stuff. I really did this for myself. Got you know, 18,000 subscribers at the moment, and it's growing really quickly. Um, I will be updating this to a fully functioning kit that you can build, including planting the trees, putting them down, and uh, even linking them together like an Ewoks a village, which I think people are going to love that. Uh, in my mods, if you haven't seen them, um, there is obviously the uh, residential houses, which I haven't pushed them as yet. I know a few people are using them, not many, but 3,000 individual, but um, it's uh, the police station, I think, had a few more. I know, yeah. So, and I've still got a bit of work to do on that. A few other little things. I added some sounds to it, so on and so forth. Um, 
and my showroom which is pretty cool as well but there's a few mods that is going to become a kit for you guys so stay tuned while i convert that over to a full functioning treehouse kit and i think that's gonna change the dynamics of everything so guys time for lunch love you guys thank you very much for joining me for this short stream well it wasn't probably that short i guess how long we go an hour and 20 shorter for me <laughs> I will be back later doing a bit of modding and uh, mapping and I'll upload those files. So thank you guys till next time. Take care. And as we always say, make sure that you have a great day Z. Till next time, this is Big Grandpa. Bye for now.